Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint a summer barn scene. Now you may not have a lot of brown grasses where you live in the summertime, but that's pretty much exactly what it looks like in Utah during the summer. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. So to get started, I painted this canvas. It's a brand new canvas and I just painted it with a little bit of burnt sienna paint for a colored ground. And as you can see, it's not evenly painted. It's see-through in some places. All of this is gonna be covered up. Now the reason for a colored ground is that a lot of acrylic paints tend to be a little bit see-through. So the colored ground, it will shine through just a little bit into the paint and give it a little bit more life, a little bit more dimension. Layering colors is really interesting, even if you can't specifically see it and you can't tell necessarily that there's a colored ground under there. If you took the exact same painting and painted it straight onto the canvas without a colored ground, you would notice a difference holding them side by side. So you can use any color you want for a colored ground. Like I said, I used burnt sienna and a lot of artists do. I've also seen artists use yellow oxide and even a complementary color to the painting that they're gonna be doing. So for example, if the majority of my painting were gonna be purple, I could use a yellow underpainting and that would create some dimension and interest in the painting, even though you wouldn't necessarily see the yellow afterwards. So I'm gonna make sure that this is completely dry and then we're gonna get started painting our barn scene. So to start, we're gonna take a piece of chalk and just kind of map out where we want everything. So I know I want a hill over here that's about a third of the way up the canvas. So I'm gonna start there and bring it down a bit. Maybe not quite that far. And up over here. This chalk is gonna just all be painted over. It won't affect your paint in any way. So don't worry about it if you have to sketch it out a few different times. So I want my barn on this side. I'm gonna start by drawing the the top edge of the roof. Now look at a bunch of pictures of barns before you draw it if you're unsure. I'm going to make the top edge just slightly angled down a little bit. That's gonna give the impression that it's kind of turned. So you can use a ruler here if you like. I'm fairly confident in drawing straight-ish lines and I know I can redo it if I need to. So I'm just gonna start there and that's a little bit too straight. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and you can make adjustments to it when you're actually painting it in. You're not stuck with whatever your line is. It's basically there. Bring it down. And here make sure that both sides of your angle are even. So you don't want one that pokes out at 90 degrees and one that pokes out at 45 degrees. Keep them pretty even. And straight down. A trick that helps me to draw straight up and down or even side to side lines is to kind of keep your eye on the edge of the canvas as you draw. Make sure that you are kind of tracking that line. Now I want a little bit of a path that comes from the barn. I'm gonna bring it pretty much straight across along here. So straight, I mean parallel with the bottom of the canvas. And as I come here, I'm gonna curve it off that way. So it's a pretty slight curve. So I'm not coming from here and making a C. I'm coming straight across and then hairpinning it. And to make the other side, I'm gonna start in the same spot, bring it straight across again, come out beyond where I started to bend it down, and then hairpin it again. So there is my path, and it looks like it's moving up this way and turning rather than looking like it's flat and moving like that. Over here is gonna be a little bit of a hill. We'll have some trees in the background here, and we'll have some larger trees in the foreground here. We're gonna start by painting in the sky. And I have my one inch flat brush that I've wet in the jar. I'm gonna grab just a bit of blue and mix it with my white until I get a nice light blue. I don't want this to be a shocking blue. And I think that the blue and the white together does make kind of a, a shocking bright blue. So I'm gonna take a little corner 
of my yellow oxide and mix it in there. I'm not looking to make this green. I'm just looking to take that blue down a little bit. And I don't know if you can tell how, how it did that. It's just not quite as intensely blue as it was. But I didn't mix enough in there to get green. So I'm gonna start by outlining the top edge of my barn. Notice as I was doing that, I have my pinky and my hand resting actually on the top edge of the canvas. So I'm not doing this and just hoping I can keep my hand steady. I've got my hand resting on there and I can just pull it across. And that's how I was able to get that nice straight line. Now that I've got that, I can just start working this color in. I picked up a little extra white there because I want the sky to look like maybe there's some clouds going on. Get right up to that line. If you happen to go over it a little bit, it's not a big deal because you're gonna paint the roof on your barn there anyway. I would say do your best to not go over it, but if you do, don't sweat it. See how I added a little extra white there. And the blue is covering the burnt sienna underneath, but you can still kind of tell that it was there. You can just see that there was something else going on in there. Oh, I dragged a little black in there. That's all right. I'm just gonna go with it and see what happens. Now can you kind of see a difference between this color back here and this blue-white that I just mixed up? You can see that this is just much brighter, much less a normal sky blue. It's just kind of a kind of a fake blue, I think, for a sky. Which is fine if you're, you know, wanting more of a, a whimsical look. But if you want to do something that just feels a little bit more classical, I think you should mix either a little bit of red or green, yellow, something into the sky to just take that blue down a notch or two. I'm leaving my brush strokes and they're kind of going all different directions. Some are going up, some are down, some are side to side. Because if you look at the clouds in the sky, very rarely, I mean, you'll see it, but very rarely do your clouds just go left and right. They kind of move everywhere. Now what's going on in here, I'm not overly concerned with. I'm gonna get the color on here, but we're gonna have a lot of trees and some grasses that cover this part. So I don't need to put as much attention into it. Another trick, don't cut into your hill like I did around the barn here. Let your sky overlap it a bit. You know where it is, you put the chalk line in there so you'll be able to find it again. But if you if you draw a sharp line at your hill there, then when we go to feather the grasses over it, you're gonna see a noticeable stop where the sky ended and where the grasses start, and it's gonna be really hard to cover. So just let it softly feather over that edge. And I forgot to draw the edge of the roof here. So you wanna make sure that it follows this edge, the very top edge. So it's just got a slight down angle. I think that's a bit much. I'll fix it up when I start painting it. So painting the roof, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this raw umber and my white. There's a little blue getting in there, I'm not worried about that. And I'm just gonna paint a base color. Use the edge of my angle brush make a nice straight line. I'm 
Now while I fill this in, I'm gonna make sure that all my brush strokes go the direction that I want the roof to be. So they're gonna follow this line here. So let's go ahead and outline that part. And then all of my brush strokes will follow that. Don't worry about adding the shadows and highlights at this point. I mean, you can if you want to. You can make the this side a little bit darker, this side a little bit brighter, but we're gonna add more layers to it. So just get this base color on right now. Let's fix up this line. And then I'm just gonna mix up a tiny bit of it and outline my part over here of the, of the roof. I'm just gonna bring this edge down a bit. Sometimes perspective can be kind of hard and that's what you're doing here with the roof is you're messing with perspective. So stand back from it every time you adjust it and look at it and decide if it's too low or too high you can make adjustments if you need to get a ruler out and measure how far this is from here and how far it is from here you can do that and see if they're the same so in fact if i hold my brush there with the tip touching the top of the roof and i put my thumb right there where the bottom of my roof is and move it here it's about the same. Now we're gonna do our base coat on our barn. And I'm gonna start with just this raw umber. And I'm gonna put the shadows in. So my shadows on this side are gonna be much stronger. All of my brush strokes are gonna move straight down. That's gonna make it look like it's covered in wood. So if it's a little streaky, that's okay. That's gonna help add to that wood grain effect. But I feel like this side is mostly shadow. And draw the edge of my barn here. That's where it changes from the side to the front. Now, just like I told you with the sky not to draw a crisp line at the hill, we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna feather that brown over top of the edge of the hill. And I'm gonna add a little bit more over here because I feel like this is where it would be really dark. Let's add just a little bit of shadow on the front, right here under the eaves of the roof. So even though this is at an angle, I don't want to paint it at an angle because I want it to still look like this front of the barn is covered in straight up and down boards. So I'm going to put my angle brush right against that line and just bring it straight down, let it kind of feather out. All right, now I cleaned off my brush and I'm gonna get some alizarin crimson and I'm gonna start filling this in. Again, just straight up and down brush strokes, letting it feather out over the edge of the hill. I didn't wait for the brown to dry, so some of it is still wet and it's gonna pull into the red and that's okay. Also painting with a, with a brush that has a flat edge like this angle brush does, you're going to create some lines in there. And I really like those lines. And in fact, later on, I'm going to add some intentionally 
Because again, it just helps to add to that board effect. Not that you're bored painting this. I hope not anyway. Wood boards. But now I hope you can see how valuable that underpainting is, especially here, because this brown and this red are quite transparent. And without that underpainting, that spot right there would be pink from the white of the canvas. But now that brown is glowing through and I think it helps add to the look of the aged wood. Same thing on this side, but since we have less dark over here, it's going to appear a brighter, truer red. my sky a little bit that's all right just cleaned off my brush dried it off on a paper towel and I can wipe off that red that got in my sky let's add a little bit of highlight to this front part so I'm gonna grab a bit of white bring it over to my yellow I'm not trying to kick the yellow back too terribly much so I've got some yellow and I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and then just straight up and down here where I want it to be the brightest not blending out any streaks letting the streaks be there if you get too much yellow you can just grab a little bit more red and lightly take it over top of it so I'm really not working this too much. If you work it too much, you're gonna find that you get one solid color here and it's just gonna be kind of a muddied mess. So if you feel like working it anymore is gonna start turning it to mud, then stop, let it dry and come back to it later. I'm just kind of grabbing a little bit of straight yellow with the red. A little bit more red and I'm gonna start right there get that hard line okay I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and we'll move on and start doing the road so I've cleaned off my angle brush and I'm gonna grab a hint of black mix it with my raw umber and I'm gonna grab a bit of white get kind of this browned out gray color taking the edge of my brush I'm gonna start let's see my line came about around here so I'm gonna put the tip of my brush right about in the middle of the front of the barn and drag a thin line about like that same thing on the other side. But I'm gonna start on the same line. Let it diverge from that line. And out like that. And now I can fill it all in. But I'm gonna keep my brush strokes flowing the same direction as the outer edge of the road. And again, this is just the underpainting. This is just the base color. So if you mix up more color and it doesn't match exactly, that's all right. Side, it's an old dirt road. It might not be perfectly even. We're gonna do some distant trees here now, and I'm gonna take a bit of black, just a little bit, over to my blue. 
And then I'm gonna come over here and mix it in with my white until I get a really pale gray. Kind of a bluish gray. About like that. Got a little extra water on my brush and I'm gonna mix it in with that paint that's on my brush and right here. And that's gonna help me get some crisp lines that I can get quite a few of. So I've got the tip of my brush pointing down and I'm gonna start here where I've got my underpainting showing and I'm just gonna start making some lines. Just kind of quickly. All different shapes, sizes, directions, but they're all packed in there pretty close. So they're kind of covering the sky Now as we go, they're gonna go from taller trees here to a little bit more narrow as they go behind the barn. But that doesn't mean they all have to be tall over here. Some of them can be quite short. And these are supposed to be just very distant trees, so they don't need a lot of detail. Don't worry about taking it all the way to the edge of the blue or to the road because the base of this is all going to be covered up. And here my paint is kind of fuzzing out, but these are more distant trees so I'm just kind of letting it. They're almost disappearing. And now I'm going to add a little bit more black, get a bit of a darker color. And I'm just going to add a few in this color. I'm not going to add as many as I did. This is just the indication that there's some closer ones. And again, I'm just letting it kind of fuzz out. Now I haven't cleaned off my brush, but I'm going to get some black and mix it with this brown and get a pretty dark black brown. All those other colors are still mixing in there and that's okay. Just want a color that's noticeably darker than both of those. And I'm going to put some trees right on, right off of the edge of the barn here that are growing here in the foreground. But I'm not going to like draw a tree with branches. My angle brush is pointing down. I'm just going to kind of do what I did with the last ones. And I think that's it. That's all I'm going to do. So those are going to be my foreground trees and they're going to be really fun. So I'll show you how to finish those up in a minute. All right, we're going to add just a little bit more interest to the barn here and then we'll be done with the red. So I'm going to grab a little bit of red and the tiniest, tiniest pinpoint of white. Can you even see how much white I have on there? The amount you're looking for is so little that you think that's not even going to show. If you think that, you've got enough and I'm just gonna lightly streak it over. I, I used that dusting pressure, meaning I'm pretending like I'm dusting something very, very delicate and that if I put too much pressure on it, it'll fall over and break. And then that little bit of red that I have on my brush is helping to kind of streak it in. I'm gonna do the same thing with a tiny hint of black. Just in a couple of places. I'm not doing this everywhere. And I'm gonna do it on this side of the barn too. That little extra bit of red will help the color, the black or the white, travel since this first layer of paint is pretty much dry by now. I think that white streak is just a little too much, so I'm going to cover it with a bit of red and yellow. Much better. All right, so here's what we have so far. Can you kind of start seeing the scene come together? Now we're going to add the grasses through here, and it's really going to start pulling it all together 
make the road look like it's not floating in the air, and give you a little bit of perspective on what's going on with these trees here. So I'm gonna go back to the one inch flat brush and don't let what I'm about to do here freak you out. I'm gonna grab a little dab of blue, mix it with some white, get a light color, and I don't want much on here. So I'm gonna wipe off most of that. I just want a little on my brush. And now I'm gonna grab some of this yellow, mix it in with my brown, but I'm not mixing it perfectly. I'm just kind of grabbing it. See how it's kind of marbled on my brush? And a little bit more white. And I'm gonna start by just kind of feathering back and forth. And that little bit of blue is gonna add some interest, make it almost appear like there's shadows in the grass. See how I'm feathering up over the top of those, the bottom of those trees? And I'm letting my brush stroke just kind of flick so that I don't have a hard edge on there. Do that here above the road too. Up over the bottom of these trees. I'm not taking this part in front of the barn here. Again, because these are grasses, I'm not worried about them covering the edge of the road there. I'm not worried about having a perfectly straight line because if it's grasses, especially on an old farm road like this, it may be growing over the road a little bit. So don't try and keep a hard edge there. And now we're gonna do the same thing. I've still got a little bit of that blue in my brush, so I'm not making up anymore. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but I am gonna add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white, because these grasses, I feel like, are closer to us. I'm gonna do it the same way. Feather it up over the top edge of that barn. And bringing it down a little lower as I come around. And I'm gonna fill it in here. Same type of brush stroke here as we did in the sky with kind of the back and forth, giving the impression that there's some movement. This is overgrown grass. So it's not gonna be perfectly smooth. I, I know I just have a big mess of colors here and I really like that. And I am making it a little bit lighter as I come around here. So this part I feel like is in the sun. This grass is really dry. I'm gonna start adding a tiny bit more brown in here as we move back. I'm gonna add a little door. Probably should have done this before I did the grass, but it's okay, I'm gonna do it now. So I'm gonna take some black with my brown because I don't want a pitch black doorway. You really don't, when you're painting like this, you wanna be really careful that you kind of, I don't know all of the terms, so I apologize if I sound like I'm just making this up as I go. If I knew the terms, I would use them. But you wanna make sure that you don't have areas that are starkly darker than everything else. So really my darkest values are these tree trunks, which remember were black and brown with a little bit of that blue-white mixture. The side of the barn here, which is quite dark, but again, it's not solid black. So this is gonna be pretty much the same. It's quite black, but there's some brown and some white in there. And I'm gonna draw a little doorway right about here. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical if it leans a little bit one way or the other. I think that that's okay because it's an old barn and the door might be a little bit crooked. The building's kind of fallen in.
I'm gonna do a little window up here the same way. Now we're gonna add a little bit more texture in the grasses here and it's gonna help cover a bit of this underpainting that you can see. So I've got this little flat brush. It's probably about three eighths of an inch wide. And I'm gonna get, let's see, I'm gonna get some clean brown here. And I'm really gonna use the edge of the brush rather than flat. So I'm gonna touch the edge of the brush to the canvas like that and I'm gonna kinda flick in different directions. And I'm gonna start up in here. I'm just gonna kinda, pretty much like I did up here, the same type of shape. And I can go back and forth a bit. Can go outside of that line. It doesn't have to be contained in there. over that doorway a bit. I think that makes it look a little mysterious. And you can't really see this color over the doorway, but as we add the other colors, you will be able to. So I'm just gonna add a bit of this. I'm not gonna take this dark color all the way into this lighter area though. just gonna kind of let it fuzz out as it gets to the lighter part and notice I'm letting it kind of flick over the edge of the road too as I get closer to here my brush strokes rather than going up so sharply they're a little bit more down because I want it to seem like here this grass is blown up against the side of the barn but here it might be laying down so that's why my brush strokes are going more up here, but more this way here. And that paint is getting less and less and less on my brush and I'm using super light pressure as I work here toward the lighter area because I don't want to just stop with it and have a hard line where that dark color stops. And let's do the same thing up here. So now I think because the grass comes up like that, I feel like it makes this look like a hill and the road is down here and there's an embankment up one side and the ground is flatter on the other side. And I'm not trying to cover all of that base color just adding some more texture to it. Back here, my brush strokes are gonna get a little bit smaller just because this is a bit more distant. But I think I am gonna get more of this dark color in here. So it seems a little bit more in shadow. So I'm using a bit of heavier paint and putting my brush strokes a little bit closer together. bigger brush strokes here where it's closer. All right, now I'm gonna grab a bit of yellow and mix it in there. Let's start lightening that color a bit. And I'm gonna start over here. Oh, let's add a little bit of white. Can't really see that difference. There we go. Just the same thing again. Don't try and cover all of the dark that you just laid down. Now with this lighter color, I am gonna take it into this other lighter color a bit more. And still letting it go over the edge of the road.
If your paint's not going very far or it's fuzzing out immediately, just get a little extra water. Notice I'm not taking this lighter color up all the way to the top. That's gonna help make sure that that dark part feels pushed back in the distance. And let's go even lighter. Maybe a little bit more gold. But I'm going to add even less of this as I did the other colors. On this side, I don't really want the grasses overlapping the road, but it's just easier for me not to worry about it. And besides, I still need to make some touch-ups to the road, so it doesn't really matter. And you know, come to think of it, I probably should have done the road before this part. So if you haven't started painting this yet, Maybe you should skip to the part where I finish the road and then come back and do this part. Otherwise, you can just live life on the edge and not care, just like me. And I'm not taking this light color very far back and it's really just kind of fading out. At this point, you might not be able to even see it in the video. I can barely see it. I think I'm actually gonna get a bit more of this brown. I still have the other colors on my brush. And I'm just gonna kick some of these highlights back in here a bit. I'm not covering all of them, I'm just adding a little bit more dark. Especially up in this back corner, I feel like this would be the darkest part of the grass. get some more of that gray brown mixture going for the road. Just mixed a bit of black in with my brown, throw a bit of white in there. And this is a quite, quite a dark color. It's a little darker than what I have in here. And I'm going to make some wheel ruts. So what I'm going to do is use the edge of my brush again. Just start from about here. Just kind of draw where there's a rut. And just like the road, the wheel rut's gonna get wider as it comes down toward us. I can grab just a hint of white and smooth it in. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth, even blend. Why? Because it's an old road. always following the shape of the road that the wheel rut is closer to. So this one has a little bit more of a sharp curve up here. This one has more of a soft curve over here. My paint is almost gone and it's kind of drying out. I'll just get a little more water on my brush. Oh, I almost lost my wheel right over here. But since you're working with the same colors, you know, if you lose your wheel rut, you make something too bright, too dark, whatever, you can do this as many times as you need to. 
You know, if you have to come back to it later, that's all right. What's not all right is just saying, oh, my road looks terrible and leaving it. If you don't like the way it looks, then fix it. I'm gonna take care of this where I got my grass over the edge of my road. On this far side. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I just don't want those slashes down over top of it. All right, let's finish up our roof. So I'm gonna do some of the black brown mixture and some white. And I like that dark color. I'm gonna use it on the back edge here. Just remember, follow this shape when making the lines on the roof. And notice I just picked up those colors and they're really streaky and that's how I'm leaving it. Because I've already underpainted this with a color very similar to what I'm doing the top layer on, I don't have to be too worried about completely covering it. As I'm moving forward here, I'm grabbing less of the black-brown mixture and more of the white. So I still have some black-brown on here and I just picked up white. But if I feel like it's too white, I can come back with a little bit of the black-brown. And my brush stroke didn't make it all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to start at the bottom and come up. I do kind of like the idea of this bottom edge being a little bit lighter than the top edge. But whatever you prefer, if you prefer the top edge to be lighter. But I just think it's kind of fun to have them not be real even. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic, I think, if it's got different fades all over it. And on this edge, I'm just gonna grab some white. Still have my black brown on here. And I'm just gonna drag my brush down it and make it nice and bright right there. All right, last part and we're done. One of the things that's gonna make this seem more summery is some nice full green leaves on this tree. So I'm gonna take a speck of my phthalo blue here and mix it in with my yellow oxide. Now again, that's a really bright green that I feel is kind of phony looking. So I'm gonna get a bit of my brown and mix it in there. Actually, maybe even a little bit more, and maybe a little bit more blue. Let's get a nice dark color going for this first layer. There we go. Little hint of water on my brush, mix it in there. And I'm gonna use the tip of the brush, and I'm just gonna just kind of dab in all kinds of directions. They don't have to be attached to the tree. They can be attached to the tree. Just kind of everywhere. Let it overlap your barn a little bit. Mix up some more when you need it. You can kind of clump them together a little if you like. These aren't necessarily leaves, more like just little foliage parts of the tree. I don't, I don't know how else to explain that. It's whatever you want it to be. And now I'm gonna get a little more yellow. I'm gonna throw a bit of white in there and get a paler green. Still a bit of brown. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not trying to cover all of these. It can even be off of them. It doesn't have to be right on them. 
Notice I've even got some spots where my blue and my yellow are separate on there. And I kind of like that, so I'm not worried about that. Now I added a little bit more yellow and some more white for a nice bright light color and I'm just going to add a few more. Not very many. So my camera decided to die and I didn't notice until after I painted the foliage on these back parts, but I'm gonna show you what I did still. So I took some blue, more blue than yellow, because I want these trees to seem like they're way off in the distance. So I don't want the foliage to be too terribly bright. So I got this nice dark, super dark green, and then I'm gonna add some more brown to it. Just get it really, really muted. I'm gonna put in the tiniest dot of white because I want it to be grayed out, kind of like the trunks are grayed out when compared to the trunks of the larger trees. So I, this is a natural hair bristle brush, and all I did was just lightly start kind of stippling around a tree trunk. I'm just barely touching the brush to the canvas. So kind of like I did with the large tree, how these are kind of going off, they're not all just against the trunk. That's all I'm doing. And I mostly kept it concentrated to these darker trunks, but you don't have to. You can put it wherever you feel like it needs it. I feel like most of the trees in the background, the lighter ones, wouldn't really have a lot of foliage going on. And then as I came over here to these smaller trees, I let my paint kind of fizz out so that I was barely laying down any color on them. They feel like they're way off in the distance to me, so I don't think you'd see a lot of the foliage on them. And I turn my brush every once in a while to make sure that I don't get this patterned polka dot look. And there's your summer barn scene. Now I know for a lot of you in different parts of the world and even in different parts of the US, the brown grasses here may not really remind you of summer. But where I live, and I realized it about halfway through the painting, that where I live, a lot of wild grasses are very brown and dry in the summer. And so this absolutely looks like what I might see if I found an abandoned barn in the middle of nowhere. It would probably be surrounded by a lot of brown grasses. But if you live in an area that is much greener and more alive, not quite so dry and desert-like than where I live, you can feel free to make this ground more vibrant and more green. I would just add, use green instead of yellow with the brown and the white. I really hope you enjoy painting this with me. And one thing I wanna do with this painting is actually do a different version of it for every season. So in the fall, I will revisit this and possibly do another one with a fall scene. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Also, if you don't already follow me on Facebook, you should do so so that you can share your lovely paintings with me. There's a link in the video description below. If you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure that you do. I am putting out a new painting video every Tuesday. On Thursdays, I put out a new vlog and I think on Sundays, I haven't nailed down exactly the time and the date yet for this, but I think on Sundays, I'm gonna start doing a live Q&A session. So any questions that you have from my vlog or that week's painting or anything, you can come watch the live session and there's a chat room on the side that goes along with it and you can ask me anything you like. Our Art Monster Squad t-shirts are coming and the pre-orders are going until June 25th. So check out the link below for information on how you can order your very own Art Monster Squad t-shirt. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.